Hello, my name is Joshua Rudd with Rudd's Home Farm. Today we're going to be talking about hydroponic issues you may run into while growing your plants. Stay tuned, find out more. The first issue you run into while growing hydroponically is pH imbalance. Now, dirt usually provides a natural buffer from pH from swaying too high and low, but since you're only using water, that pH can change vastly and rapidly. Now, the two ways to solve or the two actions you should take to make sure that your pH stays right for your plants, because if you don't have correct pH, then your plants will not absorb nutrients, what is called a lockout. Pretty much the pH is too low or too high, and so the plants can't absorb nutrients from the water you put in there, and then you'll stunt their growth, and then they'll have nutrient deficiencies. And so pH is very important. So the two ways, the two steps you need to take to get that correct is you need to monitor pH and conductivity with testers and adjust the pH as necessary. Okay, so... I left in the link in the description some very cheap pH and conductivity sensors. Okay, well, pH is, pH tester is pretty obvious, but the conductivity sensor measures the particulates in the water. Now, I use uh, reverse osmosis water from a whole house filter, but if you're just using tap water, you gotta keep a close eye on how much, how dirty your, your tap water is dirty, meaning how much minerals, how much extra stuff, because when you make, when you make your solution, you, you, that's the stuff that you're gonna have to fight with. It's like, if there's already too many minerals in there, then it's not gonna have the prop, the nutrients won't absorb into the water, and then if they don't absorb into the water, they won't absorb into the plant. So, once again, conductivity and pH are very important. So, always try to use the cleanest water you can. Okay, it's kind of a little bit of a ramble. Second part is you need to make sure, using the crack key method, that whenever you the, the, the levels get low, whenever the levels get low, you don't just refill it with more hydroponic solution all the time. Uh, that's what happened to me when I did my first grow of lettuce. I was like, wow, this is awesome. Uh, it was okay. I just kept refilling the container. I refilled it three or four times and then all of a sudden the plants just tasted so so bitter and so so nasty and then they wilted and died and I didn't know what they did. So when you when you pour nutrients upon nutrients, you know, the plants take more water than nutrients and so you end up having a concentrate of nutrients. And so you want to make sure that when every time you refill a container, you're you're emptying it you're cleaning it, sanitizing it, and then refilling it. It's, I know it's tempting, it's easy, I'll just pour more water in there, but you need to take those steps properly so you can have great plants, great tasting vegetables that have long life. Issue number two, algae growth. Uh, algae is just a general name for a plant made up of many different, many different species. Uh, algae can be slimy, it can be bubbly, it can be furry, it can be stringy and may come in many colors like green, brown, red, and black. They will find their way into every container eventually because they are airborne spores that are everywhere. So, and regardless, I grow indoors, I sanitize my containers every time I use them, and I still get algae. So, algae is just a problem you're gonna have to manage instead of prevent. It's not a major problem if you take the proper precautions for uh, prevention. Like I use in my containers here, I use, I make sure all the nutrients are covered, right? So if my first grow, my first beginner grow, I didn't cover the nutrients here as I could show you, is I just left these little openings for the pots I didn't use open and I got the bubbly green version of algae and it was just nasty, it smelled nasty and it probably affected the pH of my system because my plants died. I was able to get a couple harvests off my plants but eventually they become nasty and bitter, tasted bitter because of the algae and the pH imbalance. What do you do if algae does become excessive? Well, 
there's nothing you can really do. If, if you leave it uncovered and you let the nutrients be exposed to light, um, pretty much you just, anything that you could do to solve the algae problem will also damage the plants as much as they damage the algae growth. So you either have to start over or just deal with it until you harvest your plants and then next time making sure you're doing the proper prevention methods to keep algae low. And those prevention methods one more time are making sure you cover all exposed nutrient solutions. So you wanna cover your grow medium, you can see right here, these little pebbles, they cover your grow medium. You wanna put a tarp over the top of this, you just wanna cover everything off. If you're using a container, make sure your container is not clear, okay? That's a big deal. Don't use clear containers. Use colored ones. You know, I, I drink a lot of Metamucil, right? So I got all these extra spare containers. And so this is what, that's how, what I use. And I just leave the wrapper on. I don't even know if that's, uh, if I can shoot Metamucil. It's, I'm not a pro promotion for Metamucil. I just drink a lot of their stuff. It's good for you. It's healthy. It makes things move smoothly, right? Okay, so. So now let's talk about pests. Um, there's a lot of pests you don't have to worry, but there are some that you do have to worry using hydroponic methods. Fungal gnats are always going to be a problem in every garden, but I seem not to have a problem because I make sure my clothes are clean when I come in. I don't, you know, go play in the garden and then come directly down here and play in here. Uh, so you just kind of want to make sure if you're growing indoors that, you know, it's kind of like a sanitary environment. I mean, if you're going to be eating this stuff, you, you kind of want to be clean and sanitary anyway. So fungal gnats are, they want your medium. They want to, it depends on your grow medium. So if you use potting soil, the fungal gnats will lay their eggs in the potting soil. But if you use rock wool, they, so far they haven't been interested in the rock wool and I was able to, you know, I don't have any fungal gnats. Very excited about no fungal gnats. Um, Spider knights, spider mites. They leave these webbing all over your plants um, and they, uh, they can just, just disrupt the whole flow of the plant and they're gross. So spider mites, make sure when you see webbing, like spidery webbing all over your plants and stuff, those are spider mites, you can wipe them off pretty much and just keep a close eye on your plants. Um, and then aphids. Aphids, of course, suck the life out of your plants. And uh, this is probably more for if you do hydroponics in a greenhouse or outdoors. Those are things you gotta keep out for. It's like general garden, you know, pests, if you do it outside. I do mine inside, I don't have to worry about any pests. Um, back when I did potting soil, I had a lot of pests. I had a lot of fungal gnats. It was like a war zone in here. So that's that. Our final topic is plant disease. The biggest issue with hydroponics is mildew. So the best way to control mildew is to have proper airflow around your plants. So I keep my plants spaced apart. As you can see over here, everything's nice and has room. Um, if I do see mildew, I have a fan in here I could turn on to just push some air around and you know, my furnace is in here so there's always air kind of just moving around the house. But if you had some place that had stagnant air, then you want to have some sort of fan or something blowing and circulating air around just to make sure you don't get mildew. And there's several types of mildew, but all mold and mildew can be solved by making sure you have proper ventilation and air circulation. Well, that has been the next episode of Hydroponic Farming. Uh, thank you for joining me. If you liked it, please give a like and subscribe. I got a lot more content coming and uh, tell me in the comment section what type of pests have you had to deal with and what you did to solve them. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.